Hi there. My name is Margaret Blanchfield and I'm an artist from Sacramento, California. Thank you for joining me today. This is my very first video ever, so we'll see what happens. Anyway, um, I wanted to share with you the project that we're going to do today. We're going to do some art journaling and we are going to be doing a page like this. A colorful page with lots of collage and a little flap. So we are looking at something that's kind of a basic beginning art journaling. So anybody who's new to this, this is the perfect project for you. And I hope you join me and I hope that you leave some comments. Maybe give me the thumbs up or the like or even subscribe to my channel because I'll be adding a lot more videos as we go along. Okay, here we go. We're going to get started on this. You can open up your book to any page that you like. Um, I have this book that I got when this used bookstore was going out of business and he was selling all his books for 25 cents. So this is a gardening book. It's got a nice hard cover, hard spine, hard cover. Uh, so I'm going to use this book. Find any page that you want. I've chosen this one and um, I kind of have something already in mind for us. So uh, it's dealing with color and with black and white. So I have a selection here of Della Rowney uh, acrylic artist ink in various colors. So I'll list the colors for you in the description below, but I have several bottles here. I like to shake these up ahead of time because sometimes they settle. So you may want to go ahead and do that. Um, I found this really cool page from a magazine that has a cutout right here that says color. And so I'm planning on using that as my focal point for this piece. And I have already kind of cut it on one side and then I did a little fold here along the edge to measure where I want that to, to go, uh, how far over I want to cut that so that it covers the whole page. So I'm going to just cut that for us real quickly. This, again, is just to give you ideas. You may not be able to find that same page that I found, so you're going to need to just be ready with some black and white and some color pages. Okay, so I know that right about here in the middle of the page, kind of right about in this area, is where I want to have a lot of color happening. So again, I have my Della Rownies, and being careful to not let colors mix that um, maybe don't, go well. I think my stopper here is a little bit plugged up, but you can still dab and drip. squeezing out. Okay, so this is quite a lot of paint. I'm going to let this dry. Um, I have a heat gun and we can test it out and see if this works. It may blow it around a little too much and I might have to let it air dry. Let's try. Yeah, that's going to blow quite a lot. So let's abandon that. How about this idea? This could be interesting. I don't want to press too much, but just gently pressing what was on the page next to it, what that'll do is it'll blot some of it up and spread it around a little bit. That could be really interesting. Okay, if you see any colors mixing that you don't quite like, you can always have your paper towel handy. Kind of absorb some of that. And again, remember, if we get to the end here and you don't like what you see, you can always paint over it. So I'm going to take a lot of that up out of there and 
I want to fill in a little bit more over here with some more purple. I did really like that blue. So I'm going to put some more blue in here. Being careful not to let it get over there where the orange is. Because that will make me unhappy. Okay, let's try a little heat gun again. Meanwhile, this is pretty dry. There's a couple of spots, but I'm not going to worry about them. So my next step, now that I have all this color on here, I kind of want to see how that page that I saved, good, it's going to pick up some nice fun colors right in there. Okay, so before I stick this on though, I have other plans. I have pulled aside a card that I got in the mail which is very fun and colorful, and I want to use this as kind of a flap. And I'm going to probably cut, tear off a little bit of it. I have more than I need. I'm gonna line it up with the edge of the page here, because this is gonna be a flap for me later. So I like to use Mod Podge. So on the back of this, I'm gonna take some Mod Podge on my brush, and I'm gonna do it right on here, because it's okay if I get a little bit of glue overlap on this page since I'm going to be gluing things onto it in a minute anyway. So I'm just really covering up that back. Okay, set my brush aside. And let's line this up right with the bottom right here where it lines up with the bottom of the book. Okay, press that down so I get good contact. Double check that it's all lined up. Okay, now I'm going to keep it folded open so that it's out of my way for now. And then I want to put my color page with my fun cutout on here. So I've, I'm just going to use the facing page here to glue on top of because I didn't remember to put out my, um, my craft mat to keep this glue off the table. So I'm gonna just let it, let the other facing page be my craft mat. Cover this all up. Good contact up here. Get everything covered. You'll find that when you start art journaling, you're gonna start collecting all kinds of things, your junk mail stuff that comes, newspaper ads, um, fun brochures. Sometimes I get theater flyers from, we have a lot of uh, small theater here in Sacramento, and sometimes those have some really fun, colorful pamphlets and brochures. So you just sort of keep a stash of things, or maybe a folder or something where you can keep all of your found items, and also things that maybe you collect from online sources. Okay, so, I'm going to smooth this out, really get that on there nicely, grabbing all that nice color that I laid down and connect, making sure that I get good connection, especially up here at the edge where it's a little bit thicker. I've got a lot of glue on my fingers, but since I'm going to be covering this all up with Mod Podge. I'm not worried about any of it overflowing or overlapping onto my page. I can see right in here, I want to maybe put something in that little part of the, the um, letter R, but I'll do that later on. Okay, so now we've gotten this all covered, out, covered up. Okay, now ahead of time, I saved a bunch of things from magazines that were black and white and um, I don't really want to see faces or words on here other than my color words, so I'm going to just do some tearing and gluing here. And for me, I don't always like to have this cut edge. I really prefer a tear, torn edge, but everybody is different. Everybody has their own preferences. So I am going to be tearing these pieces up in a way that I can take off this torn edge. So I'll stop talking for a while and you'll see me doing this.
Okay, now that I have all my pieces torn up, again, I'm going to use that facing page here as my gluing place. And I'm just going to start covering up things on here that I don't want to see. Okay, now, now that we have all those on there, I do want to get back underneath some of these and really make sure that I get the glue underneath so that everybody really sticks. Um, <clears throat> you will find that when you're gluing, especially when you're using a wet glue like this, and I know it sounds weird to say wet glue, but it's, I'm talking about as opposed to a glue stick, or maybe something like PVA, which is a glue that's specifically used for gluing paper and bookmaking, you will often get warps and wrinkles and things like that. I try not to worry about it because it's all part of the design and the crinkly nature and sort of the touchability of um, what we're making. So I don't worry about it too much. But I do want to, whoops, slid there. I do want to make sure that I'm really getting good contact, especially underneath some of these, and sticking them down. And I'm also layering, and I really need to push that one. I'm sealing it over the top. Um, I use a matte finish Mod Podge for this. Oh, I see right here somebody's lifting. So let's get under there and I'm going to use the tail end of my brush to really make that connection right there. Your, your tools are great for more than one thing frequently. Okay, now look, I just went right over the top of where I put that color on. It's going to kind of seal that in there and then help all of this stick. So I'm going to use the back side of my brush to push that down too. Sealing right over that. That's why we want to make sure it's dry first because if, if I had done that and it was really wet, we'd have a lot of color bleeding and that's not necessarily what we want for this. Okay, continuing on down the page, making sure that everybody is stuck on here. All the way down to the bottom, getting that nice matte finish on it and making everything sort of unified, creating this matte surface because later when I come back and do some pen work on top of here, everything is going to be the same sheen. So I won't have that glossy magazine image and that kind of flat surface image that you might get if you're using book paper or something like that. So, oops, it's a little bit wet there, so I'm going to stay away from that. Okay, so now it's time to walk away from this let it dry and we'll come back to it later. Okay, so while we were away, I was letting all of this dry. Everything here is nice and dry. I did get a little bit of a smear here where um, some of the color from inside kind of went out into there and so I could doctor that up later. But for now, I'm gonna be okay with that. Um, I have gone ahead and drawn, make it so you could see. This is the flap and I drew kind of a heart inside there because I want to cut it. I want to have it collaged again like we did with all the other stuff. So I have this kind of scrap piece of paper here that I'm going to lay underneath it. And I have my Mod Podge and my brush right here. 
And here were some scraps that were left over from before. Okay, we're back. Here's the flap that we had from before, all covered up and nice and dry. Here's the front side of it. I want some matching or coordinating paint to go in here that I've used there. So I'm going to go back in again with some of these um, liquid uh, acrylic inks and kind of see if I can replicate some of the colors in here. And for this, I'm going to just have some fun kind of drawing with the actual uh, squeezy. I think you, the technical name for it is the pipette, which is the um, squeezy eyedropper end of it. And oops, let me do this. Take a piece of scratch paper and put it underneath here in case we have any bleed through or drip through, just so that I have something to help mask the background there. And I'm just kind of having some fun following the shapes that I see here and kind of outlining those larger guys. Let's see, what do we think? It's looking pretty good. Maybe now, just for kicks, just a little bit of the purple that we saw up in the top. How about if I do some maybe around this flower here? Maybe this becomes a purple flower. We'll see what happens. Or a purple and white flower. Okay, and I'll just do a little highlight of purple here and there. Maybe here around this leaf a little bit. Okay, I'm going to be good with the, uh, I'm not going to be good with that. I'm going to put some right in here around the glitter part of the flower because I think that looks pretty. Okay, all right, so now we got to let that dry. When I come back, I'm going to trim all the extra on here. I'm going to take away this mask um, so that we could see the whole page. But before I do that, let's get this one little spot that I missed. Remember how I didn't get enough paint in there? I'm going to put a little bit carefully in there now. Just carefully so that it fills up that part of the R in color. Okay, so here we go again. We're going to let this dry. Okay, we're back. This is nice and dry now. I can take out this kind of guard page that I put down underneath it get that out of there and it's up to you I you can cut or you can tear I usually like to cut I mean I'm sorry I usually like to tear I'm going to get rid of some of the extra around this heart 
just because I think it'll look nicer if we don't have so much overhang. And same thing around the edge of this page. If you want to take these flaps off the edge, you can either cut them or tear them. So let's clean this off. Get that out of there. A little bit over here. Okay. All right, now let's see what the other side looks like. We have a nice, heart shape over here. There is a little bit of overflow of color, but that's super easy to fix. Um, you can always fix everything in art journaling. I'm going to zoom you in so you can see this. Okay, I would like to have the message on this little heart say, let's move that up out of the way. Uh, let me think. And if you have time to spend on this, you can do any number of different fun types of fonts or special writing. I'm just kind of trying to get something on here. Uh, I know it's hard for you to see because of the glare. It says don't. Don't give away. And I'm going to use the Sharpie paint pen for this so that it shows up against this background. I'm going to put your, and let's just fancy that up a little bit, maybe do something with it. One thing I'll tell you is I'm not the best at making fun handwriting. Maybe that's your thing. I really love the way it looks, but I just never took the time to practice a lot on that. Okay, so this is the basic writing. You can jazz this up by tracing around with your um, jelly roll pen, maybe outline your words. I don't wanna hold you up here and make you watch all that. I'm gonna kinda of play with it. And um, I'll show you what it looks like. As a matter of fact, I'll show you at the very start of the video. You'll probably have already seen what I have, but I'm just kinda of gonna do a little outline work like that. Okay, so it says, don't give away your, and then when we close it up, we have color. Don't give away your color. 
Let me put this guard in here just because this is wet still underneath. Now, here's where this pencil comes in great. Around the edges of your page, you can kind of skim this along. I'm kind of using it on its side to dirty it up, blur it, blend it, use my finger to blend it. This is great for around any edges of the paper or if you have an item collaged onto the paper, you can kind of set it off by darkening the edge. We can even do that on this heart. Why not go around the edge and kind of grunge it up a little bit? And remember, this is on that guard paper again, so that it's not going to mess up anything. But now I sort of get this nice outline, messy outline around it. I'm blending it with my finger. Okay, and when you take that away, it's subtle, but it's still there. And then, there we go, our finished page. So thank you, it was fun doing this with you. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope that you got some ideas of your own. Um, ways that you may wanna finish this off is maybe do a little pen work around here. Um, it's up to you, maybe even drawing some pen work mimicking these lines right here, maybe on this space or somewhere down here, and just bring it all together. And you'll see that in the final project, which is at the very beginning of this video. So thank you so much for watching my first video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned something. Have a great day. Yay. Thumbs up. It's hard to do. Thumbs up. <laughs>